<clears throat> Hello, and welcome to Max 8, tutorial number 15, Computer to MIDI Keyboard 2. So we were just working on a computer to MIDI keyboard, i.e. a keyboard that we can use to output MIDI, and that was really the second part of Intro to MIDI. So this is in some ways part 3, in some ways part 2, but enough of that complications. Obviously, if you haven't seen any of these, go back and start at at least tutorial number 13. But here we were, and we had just gotten our keyboard to play. Uh, let's be more chord-like here. I know. <clears throat> I count myself with all of you out there whose parents just wouldn't pay for those piano lessons. Um, so I did promise that we would take this simple <laughs> simple configuration and turn it into a much cooler MIDI keyboard and we're going to do that now. So one of the um, features that we would like on this MIDI keyboard is to be able to shift up and down octaves and to do that all we have to do is be able to shift up 12 tones or down 12 tones. So let's just the way I do in Max, I just start doing it, and then I figure out how we're going to make it work. Sometimes on the fly, sometimes you hear me going, um, um, a lot. So unlock your patcher, um, um, like the sound effects. Type an I so that we get an integer. And then whatever that integer is, we're going to multiply it by 12. So this goes up and down, op <laughs> up and down octaves. So now we just type another n and type asterisk or times in computer keyboard speak 12. okay so whatever number is going to end up there we're going to multiply it by 12 and then we're going to take that number and add it to the note number so over here that'll be easy we'll just grab this pack we'll pull it down we'll take another We'll type N again, and type a plus, and then a space, and then a zero. That'll be the initial, so that every time it starts, it's not doing that. Now, click on your object and drag it towards that patch cord, and then push your shift key down, and it should just light the, light the right ones up and then let it go. Okay, so I'm going to pull this out, though, so we can look at it. With a plus... The way to substitute the number that's being added is to send it in the right inlet. So set right operand, meaning whatever number we plug in here, it's going to be plus that number rather than um, the number that was there before. So um, just so we can see it happening, we'll put another I here and put that there and connect this 12 to that. Okay. And while we're and I'm just going to caution you don't use this yet it's tempting but don't use it don't do it don't do anything so the problem is we've affected the key side but we have to also affect the key upside and since we were very naughty and we're just letting this thing put out a 510 it was just doing it somehow magically but now we're going to do the same thing we did here so let's just, um, well, I'll go through why we're doing it. Um, so, but we're going to use an unpack. So let's option click on it and drag it over there. And uh, we can even um, now put a shift on it and insert it in there. Okay. So what we want to do, two numbers are coming out of here, 51 and 50. Unpack will separate them and send the 0 out this side and the 50 out this side. Then we're going to want to add this and run it through another pack. So we could, I could have just grabbed all three of them, but we can grab these two together. Okay, we highlight them. Now push down the option key and drag them on over there um, so that now this is going to not come out there but is going to go instead 
to the plus sign in the left inlet. It's getting inlets and outlets wrong in the last video, like over and over. It was horrible to listen to myself. I don't know how you guys ever get your homework done correctly. So now it's going to add whatever number that is. Whoop, that means we have to connect it. Go over here, connect this to the right hand inlet, set that right operand. Okay. And then it will pack that together with a zero. So we don't even need an input here because it's always going to be zero because zero is note off and we want to note off whenever we have a key up. And then we come over here and uh, send it into the keyboard here. There we go. Boink. And that is how we're going to do it. Does that all make sense to anybody yet? So let's just go up here and try this. We're going to change this to one. There it is. I just click on it and dragged up a little bit. So one times 12 equals 12. The 12 goes in here. Well, it goes in here and it's waiting for something to add to it. So now let's uh, just hit our A key. Notice that it's up here now on um, C above, well, whatever it is. Is this middle C or is it C above middle C? I'm not even sure. But the number that we're getting is 60. And as you know, our offset's 48. So now if we change this back to zero, nice. And now one more cool thing we can do here is to add another object. So unlock your patcher, type N, and then type ink for um, increment, and it's called ink deck. Ink deck, increment, I, I think of it as increase, decrease, but they say increment and decrement a value. Okay, you proper c74 people all right so with the it's almost hard to see the two arrows yet but you take the bottom of this and run it to the top and you take the bottom of the number and run it to the top of that it's like an x and now when you lock your patcher um these have to get synced up sometimes so it's, sometimes it takes a second if you click on the top one it goes up and if you click on the bottom one it goes down okay now one thing to make sure of is that you don't click this while you're holding a note down or you'll be stuck with a hanging note. And then you won't be able to turn it off. So I'm just going to do the A here. Now I'm going to click it. Oh, nice. All right. That makes a very cool keyboard, doesn't it? It sure does. And then the other thing that I thought would make a really cool keyboard is if we could just change the instrument that's playing. Now you might remember down here we experimented a little. We have this 13 here. I know this is such a mess. If we press the 13 we get and that's a really nice sound. We don't even know what it is. So let's um, make our keyboard so that we can just decide to play um, whatever ones of those we want. So let's go over here and uh, give ourselves some space. Unlock the patcher. <laughs> Thank you for the sound effect there. Type N for a new object. And then type U menu. It fills in right away. There's your U menu. And let's stretch it out so it's a little bigger. Okay. And now uh, select it and let's get the inspector over here. And um, what we want to do is there's a place down here where you can um, uh, blah, 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 fill in all the things that you want in there. Menu items. But we don't know what the menu items are. Well. Luckily, somebody has been hard at work, me. I, I actually am never hard at work, but I was pretending to be hard at work. And in your max four, uh, in your max week four 
Blackboard site, and I'll put these on the YouTube video as well, there is this big list of MIDI instruments. And if you just copy them, I'm copying them, Command C or Control C on a PC, and now I'm going back to Max. And I'm just going to say these items, I'm going to edit them. And it's funny in this, make sure that you actually delete the word empty. I don't know why it doesn't do it by itself. And then we paste in all of those items. And there they are, right? And we hit OK. And now they are all in our menu. Let's check and make sure that's true. I locked my patcher and there they are. Look at them all. Can we really get access to all these? All of them? We can. Um, unlock your <laughs> unlock your patcher. Thank you again for the sound effect. And the cool thing is that it's just the number that comes out of here. All it has to do is go into the program um, inlet. That's the fourth inlet in MIDI format. And I believe, though I can't swear to it yet, I never believe it until it works. Um, let's lock our patchers and try to find a nice uh, something that we'll know that we just nailed it and got it right. How about goblins? <laughs> Now, you can't actually, they're really quiet. I'm not going to get, oh, there they are. Let's try it. Okay, goblins. That doesn't sound like goblins. Let's try a harpsichord. That does sound like a harpsichord. How about a, a, a something that has a distinctive, distinctive sound? Um... Somewhere there's um, people singing. Oh, there it is. Voice O's. I think we'll know if that's right. It doesn't really sound like O. How about voices Oz? That sounds like O. How about synth strings. If that sounds like a choir, a choir singing Oz, I know what's going on. Boy, that is just so weird. Um, how about a What's that thing called this? A glockenspiel. That sounds like a glockenspiel. I know. It's the only thing I know. So there it is. Look. So now we have the ability to put the glockenspiel in there, go up and down uh, uh, octaves, and play in a poly... Um, what do you call it? Poly polyphonic, in a polyphonic way. Now we just have to learn some music. Okay, next thing is that we want to make this into something that looks really good. Now, you don't have to do what I do here. You really don't. But let's just um, remember presentation mode here. So let's um, unlock the patcher. Thank you. And I'm going to just shift click on all the things that I want to be able to see when um, this is in presentation mode. So I'm going to want the volume. I'm going to want my input and my output. And I'm going to want the keyboard, of course. I'm going to want to be able to see what um, the increment decrement key, but also how many octaves I am up or down. So I'm going to take that number. And I want to see uh, what instrument I'm playing. Does that cover it? Is that everything I want to see? Um, yeah, sure, I think so. You know what? We can add one more. Eh, that's enough. Right? It's enough. Okay, 
So there they all are. Let's hit the uh, inspector there and put all of these in the presentation. There they are. And now all we have to do is put it in presentation mode by either clicking this icon down here that looks like an easel or option command E. And those are the things we're left with. I'm going to get rid of the inspector. And uh, we could just make it look like, uh, let's see, where would the input and out, the MIDI in and out be? They're kind of like, they could just sort of like be down here, I think, like so. And because, you know, are you really even going to look at them? And then we'll put our volume over here. It doesn't need to be that big. Don't know why I'm thinking it does. There we go. Little volume. And then this will be the R up and down. And what instrument is it? Can go there. MIDI in and out. Um, and if we wanted to start making it all neat, we could type a new, put in a panel, um, get our inspector there and get a different color just for the moment. Hello, opacity, what are you doing? Um, oh, I see. Um, I'm not I'm not really I don't want a gradient. I want a solid color and I want it green. Darn it. I do. There we go. So we're, I'm make I'm just making a green keyboard here. Something like that. Pull this across there. Tell it to go to the back. Send to the back. And um and um, I'm going to include this in a background in the background for a moment, just so you see sort of see how this works. Um, uh, let's see, view. No, it's object. It should you should be able to uh, include it in the background, right? Arrange. There it is. Arrange this object. Include it in the background. And now under view, you lock the background. And once you lock the background, there's this cool thing that happens, which is you can't select it. So now you can move other stuff around. Notice the panel is not selecting or moving. This can be a real uh, lifesaver. And then I put my stuff there. Click out here to get them to all deselect because somehow this got moved over. And then I'm going to unlock my pa my background again and put this here. and save it. Well, I'm going to push save because this is a tutorial file. And then I'm going to say save as um, save as in my teaching patchers thing. And I'm just going to say keyboard. So the cool thing about this is that now, whenever I need a keyboard, um, I have one right here, and I can just call it up and stick it in a B patcher. And if we really wanted to be fancy now, we could do the rest of it where we take all this stuff and resize it and say, yes, here is the um, defined fixed initial window location. Oh, and there's one more thing. We want to get the patcher inspector and say, oh, it's pretty unhandy when, when it's like that. We want to tell it to open in presentation mode. Um, <laughs> there it is. Open in presentation. Bonk. And then we can close that. And we can put this back. And we can say a little more. Oops. 
and we can tell it to save and I'm going to put it away meaning close it and I'm just going to open it again so that we can view what a beautiful keyboard it is right so you can use these for your B patchers or anything you want now notice when it opens up it's going to be completely reset so you have to turn the volume on and even though it says acoustic grand piano we've set the synthesizer to a glockenspiel so if you want acoustic grand piano then you have to select it like I said piano lessons anyway that's it thanks for watching there's your beautiful keyboard all ready to go thanks for watching and I will see you in the next tutorial